Hello again, my name is John Moffat. The series is The Science of Leadership and today we're going to focus on how to make use of other people's talents to solve problems and seize opportunities that meet your customers' needs, make your organization look good and make you look like a super leader. It seems like there's a number of different reasons for giving other people an opportunity to participate in problem analysis and opportunity mining. One is that, you know, we have different views of things and all of the views are a little bit right and maybe a little bit wrong. When you put them all together, you end up getting an overlay that gives you a much more accurate indication of what the problem or the opportunity is all about. So when you're talking with other people, do it in a group kind of a session or do it one-to-one, -one, whatever the culture of your organization suggests, but get at things like if there's a problem, well, well uh, when did this happen and, uh, and, and where was it happening in the organization and, and, and how often uh, is this occurring and uh, how many of the products were defective or, or the, the service areas were we receiving complaints on. When you get a bit of information like that, probably gives you a little bit of a perspective on uh, where you might go to analyze this further. Seldom is there a, a problem that is the result of just one person, although often we look at a person or a machine and say, well, they were ratched or that person wasn't doing their job. Never quite that simple. Usually there's a combination of things. Um, a, a German, uh, or sorry, a Japanese researcher named Dr. Dayashawa had developed the Dayashawa diagram. It's known as the fishbone diagram. If you draw something like that out for your folks at the nose of the fish, you know, you have a problem like uh, blurry photographs and then uh, what we know is that there tends to be four or five common reasons for problems. One would be um, facilities like defective facilities, defective equipment, uh, defective materials, um, people error, um, lack of money, policies and procedures. Those are some of the common bones on the Dayashawa diagram and then you sit down with a group of people or one-to-one, -one, you ask them, well, gee, from, from what we know of this kind of thing, where do you think the possible causes for the, the fuzzy pictures might be? And somebody might say, well, you know, we never used to have that problem until we bought the new camera. Or, uh, gee, we, we, have, we just started having that problem uh, since we got the new developing software for the computer, and it seems to me that's not matching up with the camera software. It might be that, uh, gee, we haven't had no problems with any of the technology, but what's changed has been some new people coming on staff, and, and uh, that new guy, that John Moffat, really doesn't know beans about how to take a picture without shaking his hands. Well, those are all some of the possible causes, and it's a good way to start. Once you define some of the possible causes and, and, and you put them on the bone for the, uh, the materials bone. Maybe it's a cheap paper you're getting uh, at a discount and it's, it's been in a flood. Uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's the person, John Moffat, who's got shaky hands. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's the hardware itself. There's something wrong with that new camera that you got at the discount, discount, discount place. Uh, whatever you think it might be, it opens the door for you to do a little more investigating. And that's when you take that Dayashawa diagram and decide what questions do you still have and where do you need to go to get your information? Uh, that's the next phase, the investigating. And, and once you've done that, you zero uh, in. There might have been four or five different possible causes. And you realize that, gee, all of the hardware and software is just fine. The areas where you were taking the photos and, and developing them were, were just fine in terms of facilities. But that Moffat guy's really got the shakes. He's very nervous taking pictures. And uh, that might just be him. So when you zero in on the probable cause, that's your opportunity to then take a look at some alternatives for what you're going to do about it. So you've analyzed the problem, how many, where, when did it happen, how frequently. You've investigated by looking at possible causes and then refined that by going to other sources and, and, uh, and other people and finding out probable causes big important step there. Don't, uh, don't take action before you go from possible to probable. And then you decide, okay, what can we do about it? Well, there's different ways of helping people and a lot of folks figure, well, uh, just train them. Well, in organizations, training is only one small part of a bigger array of tools for improving human performance in the human performance technology field. But maybe training is one. What you do is you sit down when you want to evaluate different alternatives and you eliminate any possible alternatives that might be against the law.
you know, like shooting John Moffat if he doesn't take better, better photos. The next thing you do is say, okay, well, well we're looking at some musts and some wants here. Um, the, uh, the cost for resolving this problem must not exceed $1,000. Um, we must have this fixed by tomorrow before the next photo shoot. A few things like that. Some of the wants under your, your uh, want list might be things like, uh, we want to have all staff feeling comfortable about working here. Uh, we want to make sure that we have some backup uh, in terms of uh, who could maybe take pictures if uh, that particular problem uh, occurs again with that particular photographer. So you lay out some musts and some wants and then you compare your first alternative which might be to fire Moffat. The next alternative might be to train Moffat. The third alternative might be to train a group of people. Uh, fourth alternative might be no training for everybody, but uh, we rotate. We uh, take a look at who else in the organization does photography, perhaps as a hobby, and then give them a job enrichment opportunity to come in from wherever they work and do photographs on our photo uh, accounting days. So those are a number of different ways of coming up with solutions to the problem. And you don't compare the solutions to each other, rather you rate the solutions based on your list of musts and wants. That's the way to do it. In the end, you get an objective versus subjective assessment about the benefits and consequences of any of the alternatives. The last thing you do is you march down the road about a year and then you look back, you know, visually, virtually, you mark down the road about, march down the road about a year, you turn back, and you take a look at the risk level. What risk did each of those alternatives represent? High, medium, or low? Um, say you were to can Moffat, well there could be some, some uh, personnel issues, some legal issues, so that might be a high risk. Medium risk uh, might be to uh, train one person like Moffat, and a low risk might be to go and get a pool of people, give them a bit of training, and rotate them through so that they all have experiences in a number of different things. So that gives you, especially when you've got a tie between points, between one option and another, it gives you the way of breaking that tie, and you're doing some down on the board thinking. It's really important when you're solving problems that you don't get yourself into other problems. So do some, as they say in chess, down board thinking. Step down the, the board a month or two or a year and take a look back and take a look at the, the choice you've made. Seems to me that um, those approaches will resolve problems and keep them resolved. Those approaches will allow you to seize opportunities that make a winner out of everybody, especially you. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be with you for another couple of programs in this series on the science of leadership, what research says.